Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dyson presentation. My name is Gerald Gauthier. I'm the sales director for Dyson Canada. And I'm Mark Delfart. I'm the business development executive in GTA. Today, we're going to talk to you guys about our presentation regarding insights and solutions to a modern hygiene problem. We're going to start this off with a first video from our founder, James Dyson, on how we approach problems in today's environment with Dyson products. In a way, problem solving is a disease. You know, you, you, you want to do it. And uh, although each one's a headache, um, it's, it's there to be solved. It's a, it's a steeple to climb. It's a mountain to climb. Mountaineers have that problem, that disease. And that, we, we have that. We were a group of engineers starting to want to make a different type of product with better technology. And we've carried on like that. I have 35 years experience of making things. And it's taught me a lot. It's no good just being a designer. You've got to make a product that works better. Things are too heavy, things are too polluting, things use too much energy, things don't perform as well as they should, things don't last as long as they should. There are just hundreds of problems in every product. What we're trying to do every day is make products work better. And if we develop breakthrough technology like high-speed electric motors, for me, that's a huge success. Because this enables so many products to perform so well. If you always do what you know is going to work, then OK, you'll have less failure. But you'll never make a substantive change or a breakthrough. What we're doing is trying to do something different and better, trying to advance technology, trying to advance what a product can do. So we're risk-taking all the time. We're stepping off into the unknown. It's sort of a brand word, but we're pioneering. And I think we've gathered around us a group of people who, who want to do that. It's not a question of coming in to make money, but coming in to, to make the business grow. We come in to make better technology and design, develop better performing products. At Dyson, we strive to solve problems others ignore. In order for us to develop products, we need to make sure that we can make a meaningful difference with meaningful innovation in that product category. For a technology to have a positive effect, it must work properly. This way, we strive to set new standards for performance and well being both in business and in leisure environments. Dyson is still a relatively young company, having started in 1993. But we've now succeeded to the point where we have 100 million Dyson owners worldwide and we manufacture 30 million machines a year. We have 14,000 employees of which 6,000 of those are engineers and scientists and that includes microbiologists with our own microbiology labs. Our products are sold in 83 markets worldwide and we have over 10,000 patents on our new innovative technologies. We've even developed our own university, the Dyson Institute of Engineering and Technology, which is a certified engineering program in order for us to develop bright new engineers to develop our next generation of products. We've invested, or in the process of investing, nearly two and a half billion pounds in the near future on developing new technologies. In order to solve problems, you need to understand the problems thoroughly which is why in July 2020, Dyson conducted a survey to look at hand hygiene and restroom attitudes and behaviors since the COVID-19 pandemic. What we wanted to understand was how are people behaving differently now that they're afraid of touching things? We know that from a facilities management perspective, your biggest challenges are now providing a very hygienic environment, visually reassuring the people that their, those washrooms are cleaned regularly, but also you're faced with the same challenges or maybe new challenges of uh, once we reopen these offices with increased usage, as we're gonna show you in the study, but also maybe even reduction in, in labor force. Uh, so your challenges are going to be, how do we maintain that high level of cleanliness or even higher level of cleanliness with washrooms under the challenges of maybe constrained budgets and also heightened expectations on what is considered a clean washroom. So why did we go into the study? In order to make sure that we had a very robust study and, and really keen insights across uh, the globe, we surveyed nearly 9,000 respondents across 14 countries. 
Now, we wanted to make sure that when we picked the time of this survey, it was relevant for you know, today's COVID environment. So we surveyed that in, in, in the month of July for a two-week period, well within the COVID pandemic, where things that people had settled into what our new rela- realities were. We wanted to make sure also that we had a very clear picture of what was happening in our market here, specifically in Canada. So we surveyed 525 Canadian respondents aged 18 and over. This gave us a very clear picture uh, of what new uh, washroom attitudes were regarding uh, you know, public washrooms. Since the COVID pandemic has started, a lot of interesting trends have come out. Some surprising, some not so surprising. First and foremost, we found that 76% of Canadians are less likely to leave a washroom without washing their hands. Now, you'd be you know, surprised to think that you know, there would be still a, a fair better amount that we're not concerned, but more often than not, three quarters of Canadians are more concerned about washing, uh, washing their hands and leaving the washroom with clean hands. 81% of the respondents were washing their hands with soap and water five or more times a day. This is significantly higher than pre-pandemic levels. Now, we knew that on average, people would wash their hands two to three times a day pre-pandemic levels. So now to go to five times a day presents new challenges for the facilities teams because once we all return back to our offices or to our, you know, into a, a restaurant or business environment, the amount of usage that will happen in a washroom will increase by almost double, which will put a lot of strain on maintenance of those washrooms. Now, on the uh, disappointing side of the scale, 8% of respondents found that they were still likely to leave a restroom without washing their hands. Now, without you know casting any uh, asparagus on people saying, why aren't they washing their hands? We need to understand they may be not washing their hands because clearly they don't care, or maybe they're afraid of what is you know in front of them in terms of that washroom to wash their hands do they have to touch a sink do they have to touch the soap dispenser do they have to touch the paper towel dispenser to dispense paper towel is there a problem how to open the door is there a touch free option to open the door so we need to dig in deeper into that eight percent but clearly one thing that's important is we know that experts have said that the best way to prevent the spread of bacteria and viruses is to properly wash your hands, but that also is followed up with properly drying your hands. And we're gonna talk more about that through our presentation. Now, we also found that obviously with this increased awareness of hand hygiene, there's also an increased awareness of the importance of drying hands. But unfortunately, we still have a lot of work to do in terms of education because 34% of Canadians responded that hand hygiene or hygiene considerations were the main purpose for drying their hands. This has increased since uh, pre-pandemic levels, but still remains an opportunity. That's important to underline this point because most people associate hand hygiene with washing their hands. But unfortunately, they also need to know that it's important to dry your hands properly. And having a proper hand drying solution is hand, it goes hand in hand, pardon the pun, with, with hand hygiene. Now, we also asked in the survey, what would you most likely do if you were in a situation where there was no paper towel or a hand dryer that wasn't working? I'm sure that we've all faced that situation. You go in, you wash your hands, you spend a great amount of time washing your hands with soap and water, and then what happens is you go to dry your hands and there is no paper towel or that hand dryer on the wall isn't functioning. Now, you're left with some, some, you know, unfavorable options. And we found that, you know, 32% of respondents would prefer to dry their hands naturally than to actually do anything else. Now, drying your hands naturally is, I guess, under the circumstances, probably one of the best options. However, it's important to underline the fact that before you do anything, like open that door or move on to touch something else, that your hands must be thoroughly dried. And we'll talk about that importance later in the presentation. We also found that the second most popular option, which I'm sure we've all done, is actually wipe our hands on our shirt or our pants before we leave the washroom. Interestingly enough, a study was done in 2019 that actually researched five different hand drying methods, paper towel, hand dryers, et cetera. 
one of those five hand drying options was actually drying your hands on your own clothes. And they found that that actually was the worst hand drying method because we don't know how clean your pants are or your clothes are. So you may have clean hands after you've washed properly with soap and water, but then only to contaminate your pants later on when you, your hands later on when you wipe them on your pants. Now, clearly we've also found that people are more concerned about using public washrooms than before. In fact, 78% of people that responded are more concerned about visiting a public washroom now than they were pre-pandemic levels. Over half, 55% of people, plan to visit washrooms less frequently. Now, this is a problem because we wanted to understand this and really reassure people that you know, washroom, uh, visiting a public washroom is safe. But we wanted to understand what were their key frustrations when visiting a public washroom. Not surprisingly, 70% of respondents said unclean toilets was their number one concern. Lack of toilet paper, not surprising, is also a big, a big issue with people because you know that creates a whole new set of problems for everyone. Um, no soap is, is important. We knew that people are now more conditioned to washing their hands properly, and we've been conditioned with the WHO and the CDC that you need to wash your hands for a proper amount of time with soap and water, and not having soap has always been a big frustration. Now, paper towel causes other problems that create those frustrations in the washrooms. One, as we, talk, we just spoke about, empty paper towel dispensers cause problems about how am I going to dry your hands. But unfortunately, paper towels also end up in the wrong places, which often will clog toilets. And overflowing garbages, we've all experienced in washrooms where there's paper towels strewn all over the floor or overflowing out of the garbage can, which creates a real negative impression for that business or that washroom. That puts on more pressure for the facilities team to go into those washrooms more frequently to make sure that it, it's a clean environment. A happy customer is a customer that comes back. Some respondents feel more concerned about using hand dryers than the same time a year before. But the main area of concerns were really related to outdated technology. Now, we've faced in our industry a lot of uh, misinformation from our uh, competitors more so to do with the paper towel industry about fear mongering about the fear of bacteria being blown up by hand dryers but in our study we found that most people were concerned about three key areas with respect to hand dryers one was having to touch physical buttons on the hand dryer so that means really the old hand dryer style where you had to push a button to activate the hand dryer today the buzzword as we all know in facilities is that we need to have hands-free or touch-free solutions. 38% of people said not having clean hand dryers was a big concern of theirs. Clearly, when we clean the washrooms, uh, uh, you know, the hand dryers need to be included in the regular cleaning regimen of that washroom. And then lastly, drying your hands with unclean air. People have a fear about what the air that's being recirculated into that hand dryer and blown back onto people's hands. We have solutions that address these problems in our Dyson Airblades, which we'll talk about later in the presentation, that really alleviate a lot of these concerns that were expressed out of this survey. We even checked with Canadians to find out what would be on their wish list. So what features would they find are important when using a hand dryer? As I mentioned earlier, touchless activation came up number one in our survey. 63% of respondents want a touch-free experience in a washroom. And that includes, obviously, the hand dryer. 42% wanted a, a hygienic surface that would kill bacteria and viruses, which is why in our Dyson Airblade V and our Dyson Airblade DB products, we've inserted chemicals, uh, treatment products, into the plastics that will kill any bacteria that lands on the surface of our hand dryers. Very important feature for customers. And then as we spoke about earlier, a significant portion of people concerned about blowing dirty air on their hands. So we found that 44% of respondents would like a product that had filters in them that could clean the air when you're drying your hands. And we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about the importance of having HEPA filtration in our products as we go through this presentation. The results of this survey were really clear. What we need is further education on hand hygiene. 
we've made huge progress with you know the help of the CDC and the WHO and Health Canada to to educate people on how to properly wash their hands. We now need to educate people on the next phase, which is the importance of drying your hands effectively. We do know, and studies have been shown for, for years of, uh, now, that wet hands can transfer up to a thousand times more bacteria than dry hands. It is clear that we need to give those people a proper drying method. We also know, as I mentioned earlier, that drying your hands on your clothes is really not a hygienic way of drying your hands. So we're gonna hand that over now to uh, our next video. At Dyson, in our microbiology labs, we study particles and microbes to ensure that we come up with effective solutions to wash and dry your hands safely and hygienically. Microbes are invisible to the naked eye. If I put this solution on my hands, it's called Glow Germ, and put it under a UV light, it mimics what microbes look like. Washing your hands effectively with soap and water is the first step to clean the hands and removing those microbes. It's recommended that you wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. But that's not all you need to know. Wet hands can deposit up to a thousand times more bacteria than dry hands. Studies have shown that the Dyson Airblade reduces bacteria on washed hands by up to 40%. Our technology is touch-free. All of our Dyson hand dryers are fitted with HEPA filters. These are important because they capture particles hundreds of times smaller than the width of a human hair. This means that your hands are dried with clean, not dirty air. The process is simple. Wash and dry your hands properly. Keep your hands clean. The difference is clear to see. So we all understand that behaviors are changing in bathrooms, but let's talk about why high hygiene is very important in more details here. With everything that's going on with the pandemic, the WHO has stated Hand hygiene is recommended as part of general hygiene and infection prevention. Hand hygiene has been shown to reduce the risk of respiratory infection in general. This is top of mind with everybody. Uh, and at this point, everybody is aware that washing your hands for 20 seconds is paramount to make sure that you have clean hands before you leave the bathroom. Now, what not everybody realizes, as Gerald mentioned, is that damp hands can transmit up to a thousand times more bacteria than dry hands. And this is problematic. The reason why this is so problematic is that even in the cleanest looking washrooms, air can contain a lot of microscopic particles. This includes bacteria and viruses. So in public restrooms, um, most, most toilets do not have a cover. And the problem here is that there's an aerosolization effect that happens every time these toilets are being flushed. And these, and these particles can float into the air and drop on different surfaces. Uh, and it's very important that people have touch-free solutions at this point making sure that they have touch leaf faucets but also a hand drying solution and if we take a look at this picture here you can see that paper towel sticking out and at this point one of the things that i'd be concerned about is grabbing that first paper towel inside of the bathroom now there are other problems with the paper towels we've all seen a bathroom that looks like this and it was really bad before but it's only going to get worse as people are washing their hands more and more throughout the day we're dealing with overflowing bins. We're dealing with uh, empty dispensers. And at the end of the day, this is contaminated waste as well that we're seeing, and there's blockages that are happening consistently as well. So we need to understand that you know, with people washing their hands more throughout the day, people are going to be using more paper towels, and these are not fully touch-free solutions. This is even before thinking about the environmental damage and the high usage costs. As people are washing their hands more, people will be drying their hands more, and the operating costs will go up. And we do understand that's a pain for a lot of, uh, of, a lot of managers that are managing buildings. Now, Dysons can be 98% less to run than paper towels, and then we can also be 78% less than other dryers. Now the problem is there's also problems with other hand dryers on the marketplace as well. We do know that they're energy hungry, that they're unhygienic, that they don't dry your hands properly, they're very loud. If we took a look at warm hand dryers, they have a heating element and you can take up towards the 45 seconds before you dry your hands. Um, most people are not going to sit there and going to walk, walk away with 
actually uh, put, uh, drying their hands on their pants. Now there are other jet dryers on the market, but the problem is they have very weak motors. And these motors do not have the power to generate fast enough airflow to pull through a HEPA filter. So I'd like to share a video with you to show you just how Dyson is a little different here. Even in the cleanest looking washroom, the air can contain microscopic particles, including bacteria and viruses, varying in size and behavior in airflow, which is why all Dyson Airblade hand dryers have HEPA filters to capture these particles from washroom air. First, the airflow goes through a fine fleece layer, trapping the larger particles. Next, the airflow passes through the HEPA layer, a fine weave of glass fibers bonded into a pleated sheet, creating a highly effective barrier to capture 99.97% of microscopic particles that pass through the filter, including bacteria and viruses. Ensuring that your carefully washed hands are always hygienically dried with HEPA purified air. So at Dyson, all of our air blades have always featured sealed HEPA filters. This is something that we've always considered when we first came up with our first iteration of our machines. We wanted to make sure that we had machines that can capture 99.97% of particles, as small as 0.3 microns. To give you an idea of how small 0.3 microns is, take uh, a strand of hair and separate that about 200 times. And that's going to give you an idea of how small 0.3 microns is. This is as small as things that include bacteria and viruses. Now we live in a world of misinformation and it's very important that we get independent testing and that we review through third party uh, certification. So with Dyson, um, we've seen independent studies with the University of Bradford, the University of Florida, as well as Camden BRI. But I wanna dive a little bit deeper on NSF and HACCP certification and talking about what this means with our products. Now, NSF has established a health and sanitation requirement for hygienic hand dryers. This is the protocol P335. This has been developed with input by microbiologists, public health experts, and industry representation. Now, it's very important that we meet these requirements, and we're one of the only ones on the market that meet these requirements. And what are the requirements? Well, we need to dry your hands completely in 15 seconds. We know that people are not going to stand longer than 15 seconds to dry your hands. We need HEPA filtration, removing 99.9% or more airborne bacteria, like Dyson's, which removed 99.97. We need to have fully hands-free operation. It needs to be resistant to burns, not using any heating element. It needs to be a very easy product to clean, and it needs to undergo uh, initial and periodic product reviews, testing in facility assets to make sure that we maintain that certification. Now with HACCP certification, this is for food manufacturing. And we want, once again, we're one of the only ones that have this certification. And because of this, we found our machines in hospitals, as well as different food manufacturing across Canada. Now the acronym for HACCP is Hazard Analysis Critical Point Control. The HACCP International Non-Food Certification Mark is highly regarded for support of organization whose products display qualities of food safety excellence. So because of this, Dyson is one of the only ones in food manufacturing. Now I'd like to pass it back to Gerald to go over through our product lineup. Thank you, Mark. Now that you've walked us through the different technologies and certifications that we use in our product, I thought it'd be beneficial for everyone to understand our Dyson Airblade product lineup. Now we've developed our products for specific environments and every one of our Dyson Airblade models is engineered to solve specific problems. The Airblade DB, is our first product that we launched. Actually, the original model was called the Dyson Airblade, and we've since launched a new version called the Airblade DB, which is 30% quieter than the original model. And it actually outputs air at 420 miles per hour, literally scraping the water off your hands. This revolutionized the hand dryer business. Prior to the Airblade DB product, most people would have very uh, unsatisfying experiences with the hand dryers, which would take a very lengthy period of time to dry your hands. And we've known, as, as Mark alluded earlier in the NSF study, that people will wait up to 15 seconds to dry their hands. This was the first hand dryer that would literally dry your hands in under 15 seconds, 
do it in a hygienic manner, but we did it without heating the air, which would normally dry and crack people's hands. We did it literally by scraping the water off your hands. But with Dyson, we're continually in innovating and bringing up new products. So then we launched the Airblade V, which I'll walk you later on in terms of its features, but it, it's designed to solve specific problems. We then launched, subsequent to that, the Airblade Wash and Dry, which allows you to wash and dry at the sink. Our newest product, the Airblade 9KJ, was just launched recently in, in 2019, and it's one of our most exciting new products that we'll spend some time about as we go through this presentation. Now, we talked about how the Airblade was the air, the first Airblade was so revolutionary in terms of hand drying technology. It still delivers incredible performance today. It always has had HEPA filtration, a sealed HEPA filter that captures particles down to 0.3 microns. As you know, we've alluded to earlier, that includes bacteria and viruses. The product comes with a five-year warranty, and it is one of the few hand dryers in the world that is certified by HACCP for use in food manufacturing, which is why today many food manufacturers across Canada use our product in their food manufacturing plants. And you'll even find the Airblade DB in a lot of hospitals across Canada. The Airblade V was designed to solve a different set of problems. We found that sometimes the Airblade DB was just too big for small washrooms. And so we needed to engineer something that would give you the same kind of performance as the Airblade DB, but in a much smaller package. So what we developed was the Airblade V. It's designed to protrude only four inches from the wall, which was very important when it comes to designing a washroom that was ADA compliant. The four inch uh, protrusion allows us to not have to recess anything into the wall, which means from an installation perspective, it simplified itself dramatically. What makes the Airblade V unique is also its ability for serviceability. It comes with a removable backplate, so a backplate attaches to the wall and the main body detaches with two security screws. So when it comes time for service, if ever you need to replace the HEPA filters or, heaven forbid, there was a problem with the unit that would require servicing, two screws, you pop the unit off the wall, you take a replacement unit, put it back on the wall, and it's as simple as that. So it really keeps the, the maintenance cost of the product in the future to a minimum, not requiring an expensive electrician to come in and take that product on and off the wall. The Airblade wash and dry went in a completely new direction. The problem we were trying to solve here was water on the floor. One of the most common issues for most companies is litigation with slip and falls. And water on the floor is one of the leading causes to slip and falls. What we wanted to do was eliminate all of the water on the floor. And by doing that, we came up with a solution where a product would wash. So we have a touch-free faucet that would dispense water. But then by moving our hands over to the side, we dry our hands at the same spot where we stand. And that brings up additional benefits where we can actually get people through a washroom faster, where normally the lineup, maybe you had a lot of faucets to, to wash hands, but you'd have a lineup at the drying solution. Now we have a drying solution at every wash station. So we can actually, in high traffic environments like transit, uh, stadiums, uh, food courts, where you want to put through a lot of people, the wash and dry solves two major problems. One, putting through people quickly for a, for a washing and drying sequence, and also eliminating water on the floor, which means from a maintenance perspective, you don't have to go into that washroom as often. Also important to note that the wash and dry is certified for use in food preparation environments because it's, it's also HACCP certified. Our newest product, the Airblade 9KJ, just launched at the end of 2019. It had, we had set some very high expectations for this product. We wanted to have it be our most energy efficient hand dryer we've ever made. We also wanted to make it very quick in terms of dry time, our fastest dry time ever, but also wanted to make it the quietest hand dryer ever made. So the challenge when you're building a, high, a dryer is it's very easy to make a dryer quiet by running the air or the motor very slow. No problem, quiet hand dryer, problem is a long time to dry your hands. If you wanted to dry your hands very quickly, I'm sure we've all experienced it with other hand dryers in the market, 
they output a lot of air, but the noise level that those hand dryers produce is, you know, is ear deafening. We wanted to make sure we could deliver both. The 9KJ gives us a, as quick as a 10 second dry time, a, a very eco energy efficient mode. In fact, we can dry your hands with that particular product. In fact, 34,000 pairs of hands for the cost of $19 a year. It's one of the lowest operating costs of any hand dryer on the market. But it's also certified quite Mark. So Mark is gonna talk about our certifications on our product as you spoke about earlier, and the quite Mark is an important one that actually gives us a very quiet hand dryer. Now each model has its own uh, unique features and characteristics, but I want to underline the features that are common across all of our range. First and foremost, all of our Dyson hand dryers use a Dyson digital motor. It's the secret sauce in our, in, our, in our recipe. The digital motor is small, it's compact, but it's incredibly powerful, spinning at nearly 100,000 RPMs. This gives us the motor with the power to dry hands in under 15 seconds. All our products, as we stated earlier, include a HEPA filter as standard. It's not an option. You don't buy it later on. It comes included in the product. The dry time on our products range from 10 to 14 seconds, which we know is, is what people are looking for. None of our products have a drain tank. We avoid capturing water in our products because when people wash their hands, the water coming off their hands quite often does still have contaminations or, or contaminants in the water. So we, we treat that as effluent. So what you want to make sure is that you don't capture the water, that you output it on the floor or down the sink with a wash and dry to make sure that it's the most hygienic way of maintaining a, a clean washroom. None of our products heat the air. In fact, sometimes you'll notice that the air does feel warm with a Dyson air blade. That's actually because of the friction of the air coming out of our small aperture creates the friction and heats the air. But there is no heating element, which means we average between $19 and $33 a year to dry, as I mentioned earlier, 34,000 pairs of hands. Our products, Airblade, have always been and continue to be touch-free. That's critical in today's environment where people are looking for touch-free solutions to stay safe in this pandemic. So another key thing that we're seeing these days is an increase in purification. Now, at this point, we've been seeing businesses and school wards you know, very much interested in purifiers because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I'd like to touch base on this and get into a little bit more details. Now, indoor air pollution can be up, time, up to five times more polluted than outdoor air. And this is problematic. When people are going to be returning to work, when people are working from home, we want to make sure that we're breathing in clean air. And the reason why we have this problem is because over the years, we've made our buildings so great. We have better heat insulation, we have energy efficiency. We're making sure that we're keeping the heat inside and making, but the problem here is that we're not only keeping the heat inside, but we're keeping all the particle matter, the bacteria and the viruses all inside of our homes as well. If we look at this graph here, we can see that particle matter comes from a variety of different places. We can get it from exhaust if you're living near a highway or if you're working near a highway. We have VOCs from formaldehyde and carpets and paints and glues from furniture. And we also have VOCs from cleaning products. There's dust in the air. But one of the main things and the main concern at this point is the bacteria and viruses that may be spread around. Now we've seen the Harvard School of Public Health put out a documentation for School Smart. And this is something that I'm seeing more and more offices move towards as well. So stay home when sick, mask up, air purifiers in every room, refresh indoor air in temporary classrooms, or maybe temporary workplaces. Now the problem here in Canada is that we can't always refresh the indoor air. We can't open the windows in the middle of the winter. And we can't always have temporary workplaces outside uh, or classrooms outside as well. So one of the main things that we really need to concentrate on is having purifiers in every room. We want to make sure that we're, suppl uh, we're supplementing this to make sure that we're breathing in clean air. Now, some of the problems with other uh, purifiers on the market is that they can release pollutants back in the air. They may not be sealed properly, and a lot of them have a high face velocity to try to push through air as fast as possible. 
Now, the problem with having a high phase velocity is that the faster that you're moving the air through the filter, the less likely the filter is to capture those particle matters. Now, Dyson has a 360 degree sealed high efficiency HEPA filter with activated carbon and has a lower phase velocity. So I'd like to share a video with you to show you just how we test our products differently as well. Harmful pollutants can be found throughout the whole room, but some conventional purifiers are primarily designed to pass industry tests conducted in small chambers that aren't the size of real living spaces. And because they are designed to work in these small spaces, they don't project air across the room, which means they could develop a bubble of clean air around themselves. Here at Dyson, we didn't think this was good enough, which is why we've developed a new test method that represents real living spaces. We discovered that some living rooms can be as large as 27 meters squared. So we made our test chamber that size with nine sensors to continuously monitor air quality throughout the room and map out exactly how the room is purified. After rigorous testing and 2,605 product prototypes, we concluded that to deliver purified air throughout the whole room, a machine needs to do three things. One, sense pollution events automatically. Two, capture gases and ultrafine particles. And three, mix, circulate and project purified air around the whole room. These three things combined ensure the air is purified anywhere in the room. The Dyson Air Purifier is designed and tested to do all of this properly. We believe all air purifiers should be tested this way. CDR has been used since the 80s, and Dyson felt it was an outdated test when we wanted to come to the market with our purifiers. So with the CDR test, they allow two different fans inside of the room, a ceiling fan, an additional recirculated, uh, recirculation fan. They also only have a single sensor, and that sensor can be placed anywhere inside of the room. The other problem is that they only test in a room that's 127 square feet, or, or pretty much 12 meters squared. We don't feel like that was big enough. So when Dyson came to the marketplace, we decided we need to do something better. And we decided to create the polar testing method. And with this, we have a larger test chamber. So instead of 127 square feet, we're looking at 290 square feet. We do not allow for any additional mixing fans. And we don't put one sensor in the room where we decide we want to put it. We put nine sensors inside of the room at predetermined locations, two in each corner and one in the middle of the room. Now with the testing methods as well, CADR only tests for three different particulate matters. They test for dust, pollen, and tobacco smoke. Well, with our polar testing methods, we test for five different particle matters. So we also included pet allergen and dust mite allergen. But we also want to go a step above and test for gases. So we test for 10 different gases, including things like formaldehyde, ammonia, acetic acid, toluene. And this is really one of the main things that Dyson likes to do different in solving problems that we're seeing to ignore. Now, just like with our HEPA filters in our hand dryers, we also have a HEPA filter here, which captures 99.97% down to 0 0.3 microns. This is an H13 filter, just like our filters inside of our hand dryers. And this is a medical grade type filter. A lot of people considered anything H13 above a medical grade type filter. But furthermore, we also have active carbon to make sure that we're capturing those gases. And this is a 360 degree filter. So it's not only grabbing air from one area of the room, it's grabbing air from all areas of the room to make sure that there is purified air throughout the whole entire room. Now Dyson products work different in a lot of different methods as well, but we have a couple of things that I'd like to call out with intelligent purification. So you can control your devices through your mobile phone anywhere that you are inside of your office, inside of your building, or inside of your home. We also have a diffuse projection. We understand that people do not always want to feel that air flow pushing towards them. Living in Canada, this can be kind of cool, and we want to make sure that we can reverse that airflow. So with diffuse projection, we can actually move the airflow and reverse it to the back of the room. Another key thing is that all of our purifiers have the QuietMark certification. And with QuietMark, this is third-party testing to prove that we are, in fact, not high decibel rating levels and that it won't bother people when they're actually trying to work. Now, our range starts with the Dyson Pure Cool. 
With this, we have our tower version and our desktop version. The tower version is great to put on the floor, put in the corner of the room. And the desktop version is great if you're going to put it on a desk or on a surface. All of our purifiers have been proven to capture H1N1 influenza virus as well. And we have been proven as well to capture 99.97 of those fine particles. Now, just, with, uh, just like with our purifier, our pure cool, we have a pure hot plus cool, which has all the great things with the Dyson pure cool, but now we're adding the heating element. Here in Canada, it's not always the same temperature. We understand that we're gonna be dealing with winters and as well with summers. So we have the cooling aspect for the summertime and the heating aspect for the winter time. Now we also have the Dyson Pure Cool Me. And the Dyson Pure Cool Me is really meant for personal purification. It uses the Quanda effect to make sure that it has focused airflow so it's not gonna be bothering people around. So with this, I just wanna reiterate why choose Dyson purifiers for businesses. It automatically detects airborne particles and gases. It's gonna capture, has sealed HEPA filters, capture 99.97 of fine particles. It projects to make sure that it gets to every area of the room. There's an LCD screen. It reports indoor air quality consistently. It actually removes 97% uh, of orders with our active carbon filter as well. And there's a very easy filter maintenance on cleaning. I'm gonna pass it back to Gerald to go through some frequently asked questions. Thank you, Mark. Um, we thought we would uh, preempt, maybe we've had questions throughout the presentation and, and you, you may have held back on asking those. And to get the conversation going, we figured we would start with some of the most frequently asked questions that we have uh, from working here at Dyson. The first question that we wanted to highlight today was, what is a HEPA filter and how does it differ from a normal filter? HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air. And to be a genuine HEPA filter, you must pass very strict test standards, both European and IEST uh, standards. A filter that does not state it is HEPA may not be proven to work at, to such high efficiency levels. Second question was, what's the lifetime of a Dyson HEPA filter? or HEPA filter in a Dyson product. All Dyson Airblade hand dryers have a five-year warranty, which includes replacement of the HEPA filter. Our hand dryers are installed over, all over the world in many different environments. The filter performance and efficiency is dependent on a number of factors, including the volume of particles in the washroom air, and also the general level cleanliness of the washroom, and the usage frequency of the hand dryer. We've had certain instances where we've had our products used in a bakery where there's a lot of flour that's airborne. Clearly the filters in that environment would need to be replaced every couple of years. We've had other environments where a hand dryer was used in an office environment where the filter would be good for the lifetime of the product. So it really depends on the environment. But clearly one thing to remember is the cost of a Dyson HEPA filter on an Airblade is, is $100 retail. So it's a very minimal investment for where you're typically looking at a five to seven year lifespan on a HEPA filter. And on our, and our air purifiers, uh, our products have a two year warranty. The HEPA filters uh, are out of warranty. After, you know, so they don't not covered by the warranty, but they are, um, will last you about a year if you use 12 hours a day. Another common question is, will bacteria and viruses captured by the HEPA filter be blown back out of the machine? The answer to that is no. We know that Dyson Airblade uh, include uh, filters that capture those small particles, and they, they will, um, once captured into the HEPA filters, in normal usage, there's no evidence to suggest the particles would be released from the filter. Obviously, when changing the filter, we do recommend taking some precautions to make sure that when you're handling those, just like you would with any other waste in the washroom, and dispose of them accordingly. Is it true that the powerful airflow of Airblade hand dryers means that more particles are blown around the washroom 
risking more spread of bacteria. There are a number of studies used by the paper towel industry to support bold and inaccurate claims. In general, these studies were not conducted under conditions or scenarios that simulate real life or an actual situation that a person would reasonably experience when using a Dyson hand dryer. Researchers that conducted these studies were only able to achieve such results by grossly contaminating their hands with bacteria and viruses and then drying them with a Dyson air blade hand dryer without washing their hands first, which clearly is not representative of reality. Conversely, research by the University of Bradford showed that when used correctly, Dyson air blade hand dryers in fact reduce the bacteria on hands by up to 40%. I'd like to thank everyone for the time today. Um, on behalf of Dyson Canada, we hope you found this presentation interesting and informative. And uh, pass it over to Mark for a final goodbye. Once again, just like Gerald, thank you very much for joining us. If anybody has any questions, please reach out to me directly at the booth. Feel free to reach out to me. Uh, all my information is available, and I'd be happy to have any conversations and answer any questions. And feel free to ask any questions uh, currently on the chat right now, I am here available to uh, reach out any answers if you are uh, here during the presentation time. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.